Patients with ulcerative colitis are at an up to 15-fold increased risk for the development of colitis-associated cancer. Therefore, surveillance in these patients is of crucial importance. Current guidelines recommend that all patients with ulcerative colitis should undergo regular surveillance colonoscopies eight years after the first appearance of symptoms. Moreover, repeat colonoscopy with random biopsies in 10 cm intervals should be recommended every one to two years. Nevertheless, extensive evidence suggests that standard white light endoscopy with multiple random biopsies may miss a quantum of lesions. In an attempt to improve surveillance strategies, a variety of new endoscopic imaging techniques were introduced. This video focuses on advanced endoscopic imaging techniques for the early detection of dysplasia in ulcerative colitis, including dye-based and dye-less chromoendoscopy, magnification endoscopy, endocytoscopy, and confocal laser endomicroscopy. Dye-based chromoendoscopy uses biocompatible dye agents to enhance mucosal detail and submucosal vascular patterns. Typical contrast agents include methylene blue, cresyl violet, and indigo carmine in a concentration of about 0.2%. This video demonstrates the application of methylene blue via a standard spraying catheter in a patient with long-standing ulcerative colitis. The dye is sprayed onto the mucosal surface and the endoscope is slightly withdrawn in 20 to 30 cm intervals. As the dye does not always coat the surface evenly, it is recommended to suck the air out so that the mucosal folds are opposed to each other and a homogeneous colorization of the mucosa can be attained. Afterwards, the mucosal surface is analyzed for suspicious lesions and mucosal irregularities. Therefore, careful attention should be paid to the mucosal pit pattern. Level of evidence confirms that dye-based chromoendoscopy significantly improves the detection of dysplasia in ulcerative colitis. In this patient, chromoendoscopy visualizes a slightly protruded lesion in the transverse colon with gyrus-like pits, according to a CUDO pit pattern type 4. The lesion is then removed using snare polypectomy. Histopathology confirmed diagnosis of a sporadic tubovillus adenoma, also called adenoma-like mass or ALM lesion. This patient is referred for surveillance colonoscopy of long-standing ulcerative colitis. On standard white light endoscopy, one can visualize a disruption of the mucosal vascular pattern between 3 and 6 o'clock. In addition, the mucosa appears slightly edematous and granular. After application of 0.4% indigo carmine, one can now clearly delineate an extensive and flat lesion. The lesion is now marked using the distal tip of the polypectomy snare to ensure proper delineation of the lesion to the surrounding tissue. Afterwards, the lesion is lifted in a stepwise fashion by injection of diluted epinephrine. Total resection of the lesion is finally reached using piecemeal polypectomy. Histopathological analysis revealed dysplasia-associated lesion or mass or DALM lesion with high-grade intraepithelial neoplasia. Magnification or zoom endoscopy in combination with methylene blue yields an improved tissue visualization. Using the water immersion technique enhances the surface patterns. Therefore, magnification endoscopy can guide subsequent targeted biopsies of suspicious mucosal irregularities. Recent evidence in endoscopic imaging has led to the development of so-called dialless chromoendoscopy techniques. These include narrowband imaging, Fujinon intelligent color enhancement, and eye scan. Potential advantages of dialless chromoendoscopy techniques include easy usage by just pushing a button on the handle of the endoscope and the homogeneous coloration of the surface. Early data suggests that dialysis chromoendoscopy could yield similar detection rates of dysplasia in ulcerative colitis like dye-based techniques. The video demonstrates the differences of high-definition white light endoscopy and different eye scan modes on the appearance of the mucosal surface and the mucosal vascular pattern. While eye scan 1 mode clearly enhances the surface pattern in order to better detect subtle lesions and mucosal irregularities, iScan 2 and iScan 3 modes enable a color enhancement, thereby increasing the visibility of the mucosal vascular pattern. Endocytoscopy is a new imaging technique based on the principle of contact light microscopy. Different prototypes of this system are available, including both endoscope-integrated and probe-based systems, 
which can be advanced through the working channel of a standard endoscope. Endocytoscopy enables high magnification imaging of mucosal surface structures of an up to 1400 fold level. To enable endocytoscopy, adequate bowel preparation and mucosal preparation is strictly necessary as endocytoscopy only allows visualization of the very superficial mucosal layer. First, mucolysis using N-acetylcysteine is recommended before the procedure to remove surface mucus. Accordingly, methylene blue or toluidine blue have to be applied topically to the mucosa in concentrations of 1% or 0.2% respectively. The staining is then left for one minute, followed by repeat washing of the mucosa with water. Afterwards, the endocytoscope is gently pushed against the mucosal surface and high magnification imaging is performed. Importantly, for extended visualization, repeat staining of the mucosa may be needed. As endocytoscopy is a relatively new technique, large trials in inflammatory bowel diseases are still pending. Nevertheless, endocytoscopy is a promising development as it allows visualization of cellular and subcellular structures during ongoing endoscopy. Confocal laser endomicroscopy is based on tissue illumination with a blue laser light after application of fluorescence contrast agents, which can either be applied systemically, like fluorescein sodium, or topically, like acrylamine hydrochloride or cresyl violet. Two different types of endomicroscopy systems are currently available. One is integrated into a standard high-resolution endoscope and called ICLE for integrated endomicroscopy, and one is probe-based, capable of passage through the working channel of a standard endoscope and called PCLE. Once the fluorescent agent is applied, the laser is enabled. Afterwards, the confocal imaging system is gently advanced onto the mucosal surface. Confocal imaging using the integrated system can be improved by performing a little suction to the mucosa, thereby stabilizing the laser. Endomicroscopy then clearly visualizes the colonic architecture, including colonic crypts, vascular structures, and cellular features, including the dark appearing goblet cells. Recent data has shown that chromoendoscopy, in combination with endomicroscopy, detected 4.75-fold more neoplasia compared to conventional colonoscopy, and that endomicroscopy also has the capability to differentiate between an ALM and a DLM lesion in vivo during ongoing endoscopy. In conclusion, advanced endoscopic imaging has the potential to improve early detection of dysplastic lesions in ulcerative colitis. Careful attention should be paid to highly dedicated training in order to use these techniques successfully. Nevertheless, the assessment of these new endoscopic imaging modalities in clinical practice still requires further investigation. Therefore, endoscopy with multiple random biopsies remains the gold standard for surveillance in patients with ulcerative colitis. Surveillance.